نحمد ونصلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یوریدون لیطفئو نور اللہ بافواہم واللہ متم نوره ولو کرہ الکافرون هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون يا ايها الذين امنوا هل ادلكم على تجاره تنجيكم من عذاب اليم تؤمنون بالله ورسوله وتجاهدون في سبيل الله بأموالكم وأنفسكم ذلك خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected brothers in Islam, distinguished ulama and very respectable students. We are here after Salat Asr in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prayer and its importance in Islam that is very much known almost to every Muslim. لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلَمٌ وَعَلَمُ الْإِيمَانِ الصَّلَاةِ Everything is known by its sign. And Iman of a Mu'min is known by his prayer. As you know, Judaism it has its own symbol which is called Star of David or Najmatu Dawood. Christianity is known by the symbol and sign of cross. The Hindus, they have their Zinnar. The Sikhs, they have their turban, their Kirpan and their Kala. Now how you will come to know a Muslim or Islam. So there are so many sha'air. In the safa wal marwata min sha'air illah. These are the symbol and signs. But if somebody will go to Mecca Muazzama, he will see the safa and marwa and the sa'i of hujjaj or muhatamiri in there. But what about here or the rest of the world? So Imam Waliullah Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he says the very much visible signs of Islam are four. Number one, Baytullah, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, Rasulullah. The Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, Kitabullah. The Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number four, Salatullah. Your prayer. Respected brothers, prayer, how much important that is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, As-salatu imadu al-deen. What is imad? Imadu al-zahar. Your backbone. Your whole body is based upon your backbone. If something happened to your backbone, may Allah protect all of you. So then, you will not be able even to control your urine. You will not be able to move properly. You will get paralyzed. So we should think about these words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
If a Muslim is not praying, so it means that he's a paralyzed guy in his deen. Because his backbone is not there. Respected brothers in Islam, Prophet sallallahu says in another hadith, in awwala ma yuhasabu bihil mar'u yawm al-qiyamati as-salah. On the day of judgment, the first ever thing or issue a Muslim has to be questioned about, that is prayer. So now, in awwala ma yuhasab, awwala ma yuhasab, that it means that your credit would be considered through your prayer. If the case of your prayer is not okay, so it means that you lost your credit. And you know very well living in America, if somebody loses his credit, what happened to him? He cannot buy a house. He cannot get a loan from anywhere. So many things he cannot do. So once again, you can say he is 80% paralyzed economically and financially. So it means that on the day of judgment, if the case of prayer is not okay, so it means you lost your credit. When the credit is lost, what will happen to you the rest of your good deeds? We must think about every single word of Allah or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa why they used it like this? That's not a coincidence. Quran is mojiza. That is the kalam and words of Allah. But hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is also a mojiza. The words of the messenger of Allah. So, so he said in awwala ma yuhasa wa bihil mar'a. That loss of credit. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in a hadith, Hubbiba ilayya min dunyakum salasun. Hubbiba ilayya, passive voice. Hubbiba ilayya. It means it has been made mahboob to me, or beloved to me, from your world. This world was not the world of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because in a hadith he said, Mali wa dunya. What do I do with dunya? I am not a man of dunya. So that's why he said, Hubbiba ilayya. He did not say min dunya he said min dunya kum. From your world, three things are made beloved to me. Number one, at-tweeb, the fragrances, the perfume, the author, because that is a part of purification. That's a part of tahara. And as I was referring to, maybe last night in my speech, that if you want to be a Saeed one in the eyes of Allah, a lucky one in the eyes of Allah, وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سُعِدُوا فَفِي الْجَنَّةِ وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ شَقُوا فَفِي النَّارِ Once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word or the siga shaku, active voice, or ma'loom, and su'idu, passive voice, or majhul. Because a shaki guy, an unlucky guy, he is earning shakawat for him, himself. But as far as the case of Sa'ada is concerned, that's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why he used shaku as active wise, and su'idu as a passive wise. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ شَقُوا فَفِي النَّارِ وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سُعِدُوا for those who have been given sa'ada. So it means nobody can, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us sa'ada. You cannot earn it yourself. Got it? Let me give you another example from Quran. Because, yes, our other brothers are sitting as well, they are educated people. But, terminologically, those who are called ulama, are tulaba of ilm deen, for them, this type of talk is must to find out how to explain the book of Allah. And what is there in each and every single word of the book of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And actually that's an amana. We have been given by our mashayikh. Yahmilu haza al-deen. Min kulli khalafin uduluhu. Yanfuna anhu tahrif al-ghalin. Wa intihal al-mubutilin. Wa ta'wil al-jahilin. Aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. 
As you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the responsibility to protect this deen. He's protecting it. Yes or not? Yes. To protect his book, he is protecting that. <laughs> Otherwise, a lot of fitnas are going on. Sometime a fitna happens, ar arose, and they say, yes, this Surah Anfal and Surah Toba is making problem. Take it out of Holy Quran. You know what I'm saying? The same thing which was happening to the Prophet وسلم, that it be Quran in Ghere Haza. Oh, Baddilho. Qul ma yakunu li an ubaddilahu min tilqa'i nafsi in attabi'u illa ma yuha ilayya Say Inni akhafu in asaytu rabbi azaba yawmin azim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they came to the Prophet that the Quran which you are giving us or you are delivering it makes problem disputes fights Yes? So can you do please one thing? Can you do us one favor? To modify it a little bit. Yes? Make it a little bit mild. <laughs> Make it a little bit mild. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أُبَادِ لَهُ مِنْ تِلْقَاءِ نَفْسِي What are you talking about? This is mine to change it. Our Quran is in my control to bring you another one. مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أُبَدِّ لَهُ مِنْ تِلْقَائِ نَفْسِ إِنْ أَتَّبِعُ إِلَّا مَا يُوحَ إِلَيَّ I do follow nothing but only wahi which I receive from Allah سبحانه و تعالى and Allah سبحانه و تعالى says they tell them لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا تَلَوْتُهُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَا أَدْرَاكُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ لَبِسْتُ فِيكُمْ عُمُرًا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Ya Subhanallah, this Quran, I love it. You love it as well. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us the proper understanding of its book. Amen. Then you will fall in love with this book. Yes? And when you will fall in love with this book, your heart will become clean and neat. When your heart will become clean and neat, then this Quran will enter too. Because it will never enter to a dirty place or junkyard. This very pure thing, it will never enter to junkyard. Yes, and especially such like junkyard where you are throwing the bad stuff of your house or the houses. How it will go there? Hafiz says, Ke se Hazrat Quran. Who understand Persian? Yes. Daudja. Mansur al Sunos. Yes or not? Uru se Hazrat Quran. Niqab aga barandazad. کہ دار الملک ایمارہ مجرد بین ادس غوغا حافظ شیرازی سے he is giving us an example that's called استعارہ استعارہ شعریہ استعارہ شعریہ yes inshallah sometime later you will be studying تلخیص المفتاح اور مفتاح العلوم اف علامہ سکاکی اور you will be studying مختصر المعانی اف علامہ تفتزانی اور متول اف him as well there you will understand that what استعارہ means especially in اشعار so Hafiz says that عروس حضرت قرآن نقاب آگا بر اندازت I'm not talking about America I'm talking about our own oriental culture yes as I mentioned yesterday as well that a girl which has been betrothed by a young boy for one year two year how whatever the case may be until the proper marriage until the proper marriage that is prohibited there in that culture to see each other. Even though if your becoming wife is your first cousin, you were going to their house very frequently, very openly. But the moment she became in your name, now this is prohibition. You will go to the house of your uncle, the house of your khala. I'm not talking about deen. I'm talking about culture. So that girl, oh... <coughs> He is coming. So she runs away, hides somewhere. You know what I'm saying? For what? As I mentioned yesterday, <laughs> to give you some suspense later on. <laughs> yes? <laughs> and you will be in that suspense forever. <laughs> yes? <laughs> so anyhow, and when 
the marriage takes place there. So then for two, three days, that bride, it is totally covered. She does not show her face to anybody. Sitting on a bed, people are coming, sisters are coming for congratulation, bringing whatever they are bringing for the bride. But the bride open her face when a lady, auntie or whatsoever the case may be, gives her some money. Yes, ten dollar, twenty dollar. So then she be like this. I saw her. Very pretty. You know what I'm saying? Got it? Got it or not? So that is <coughs> what Hafiz says. That this Quran is just like a very pretty bride. A very pretty bride. It will open its mouth. Uruse Hazrat Quran. Nikabaga Barandazad. The moment it will feel that your Darul Iman is totally neat and clean. So then it will say, okay, I'm coming here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it clean. If the dirty stuff is there, yes. If the love with this world, if the love with this dunya, if the love with worldly attachment, that is there. Even though if the guy concerned is a graduate alim, he will never understand Holy Quran. So respected brothers, my humble request to the students of Quran and so never fall in love with word and worldly attachment. Those who did a great job, they never fell in love with. Whatever they had, it was for other. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, how rich a man he was, he had a chain, franchise. He had a chain, that was a chain of fabrics in Baghdad, in Basra, in Kufa, from his own pocket, he used to give stipend and he used to give financial assistance to 4,000 ulama and tulaba. Oh. And whenever Imam was giving dars, rahimahullah, and he noticed a alim or a student of Quran and Sunnah that his dress is not looking good. So it means that he does not have it. And being in the dars of Quran and Hadith, Imam Malik used to take shower for every dars. Oh. Imam Malik used to how, if not new, but wash neat and clean dress when he was coming to teach Quran or Hadith. And somebody asked him, that Imam? So he picked up the bottom line. He said, Astahi min sahib, has al qabr. I have haya from that one who is living in this qabr, in this grave. Muhammad is there. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now I will be saying his words. It does not look good that my dress is not clean and neat. Yes? You will make yourself clean and neat from outside and try to make from inside. Then you will see how Quran comes there and how Hadith comes there. How you will get in touch with Allah and with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know what I'm saying? This is but a matter of experience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that experience. May Allah make us used to that experience. So respected brothers in Islam, anyhow, Uruse Hazrat Quran, Niqab Aga Barandazad, Kedarul Mulki Imara Mujarrad Bina Dazgawa Kul. Tell them, O Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to give you another asal from Usul al Tafsir that the whole Quran is Mubalag. Prophet ﷺ was bound to convey each and every single word or each and every single rule he was receiving from Allah. Yes. He never tried to hide anything. And that's why he made 140,000 Sahaba and Hajjatul Wada his witnesses. Allah, hal ballakhto? Why that word is mentioned three times in Hadith of Hajjatul Wada? So Prophet ﷺ he was not asking the same people three times. He was asking people to his right, Allah, hal ballakhtu? Did I convey the message properly? They said, bala, shahidna ala haza. Yes, sir, you did it. To the front, Allah, hal ballakhtu? They said, of course you have done it. Allah, hal ballakhtu? They said, of course, you did it. Then he looked at the heaven and he said, Allahumma fashhad, Allahumma fashhad, Allahumma fashhad. Oh Allah, 
Be my witness. They testify it. Be my witness. They testified it. Be my witness. They testified it. And then he addressed them. Now you are duty bound. You said it. That I conveyed it properly. You got it and you received it. When you got it and you received it, what you will do now? When you are a teacher, when you are institution, when you are madrasa, is giving you the turban. So what the turban for? Yes, that you will be working like a porter and putting thing here or what? You know what I'm saying? That that's a porter turban or what? Is it? No, they are giving you a piece of paper. That's a piece of paper? That's a responsibility they are putting on your neck. Because if you will read the very wording of that sanad, the very wording of that shahada, what it says, first of all, it tells you that as you studied under us, I know that you have some qualities. So I do give you permission the way I received from my sheikh, Mr. So and so. He received from his sheikh, Mr. So and so. He received from his sheikh, Mr. So and so. He received that permission from his sheikh, Mr. So and so, up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, a very big list is mentioned there. Yes, so what that list mean? You are going to memorize these names for Baraka? You have to look into their history what they were doing. If a son is not following the footsteps of his father, so we should think about him, that maybe something is wrong. You know what I'm saying? So they are your forefathers in this regard. And look, commitment to forefathers, how much important in human nature, even the mushrikeen, they were telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Haza ma wajadna alayhi aba'ana. Why we do that? Because our forefathers were doing this. Yes, but as that practice was wrong, so that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected it. Our Sheikh said that Allah said that uh, even though if their forefathers were donkeys, still they will be following them. Allah says, They never had any aql to use it, nor they have any hidayah, a divine one, to follow it. So still they will be following the same for, for forefathers. But the fathers I am talking about, they had the aql and they had the hidayah. What do you think? Shah Waliullah had aql or not? Even in Western countries, in his philosophies, in one one chapter, people are writing the maqala a PhD. The philosophy of Imam Waliullah, Adelavi Rahmatullahi Ali. You know what I'm saying? What do you think? That Mawlana Qasim Nanotvi, he did not have aql? Tell me. He had aql or not? Yes. He had hidayah or not? Yes. What do you think? That and your sanad. There is Ibn Mas'ud. There is Ibn Abbas. There is Abdullah Ibn Umar. There is Abu Huraira. What do you think? They had aql or not? Say. Yes. They had hidayah or not? Yes. They were the utmost guided people. So then, logically you are bound to follow those people. That what the list mean. And in the end, the Mashaykh right there. Wanu si al akhal kareem. Allah yansana fi adiyyati his saliha. And we are making a wasiya and will to our brother, the respectable brother, the student who is getting graduation, that he may not forget us in his dua when he is making. So when we are making dua, we say, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give a best paradise to Hazrat Shaykh al Hadith, Mawlana Abdul Haqsa. Oh Allah give a best paradise to Shaykh al Hadith, Mawlana Zakariya Sahib. Oh Allah give a best paradise to Shaykh al Islam, Hazrat Madani. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be happy with Imam Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Kashmiri. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the spirit and ruh of Shaykh al Hind, Mawlana Mahmud al Hassan. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the spirit of Imam Waliullah and Shaykh Abdul Aziz. 
او الله سبحانه و تعالى بلس دي ارواح اف صحابه اند تابعين هو اور تيچر ان ون وي ار دي ادر اند ذن انذر ثينگ ذات از منشن دير و ان ينشر دعوه دين الله عز وجل او او ينشر مجرد ازال سو متعدي بت اف يو وانت تو ميك ات فردر مور متعدي او ان ينشر دين الله عز وجل رافعا علم التوحيد والسنه قامعا للشرك والبدعه اف يو ويل انديرستاند ذا جراديويت مولويز اونلي ذيس فيو ورز بت ذا دي وين وي ريسيف ذا سند وي بوت ات سم وير فور بركه ان ذا باكس يس then we never read it then we never my sons are sitting here sometime i show them my asnad so actually i don't want to show them my asnad yes that's actually a bias on me when i show it to them so then i read it once again that what was the wasiya of my mashayikh do i fulfill it or not so i should try respected brothers otherwise we will be ashamed of what we are doing here in front of our mashayikh and who are our mashayikh for example starting from sheikh ul hadith maulana abdul haq from sheikh ul tafsir maulana abdul hadi from sheikh ul islam hazrat madani from imam ul asr allama anwar shah kashmiri from sheikh ul hadith maulana zakir yasib and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so respected brothers in islam my point was that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he made them bound he gave them the responsibility he put the burden on their shoulder and he told them la alli la alqaakum fi maqami hadha abadan maybe i will never meet you again here in my lifetime prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them la alli la alqaakum fi maqami hadha abadan so as you know that anyone who believe in death so when they are departing from each other so they say like this maybe we will meet again or not but anyhow we should keep uh, each other in our dua but these wording of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam other sahaba took it as usual but abu bakr picked up the bottom line abu bakr picked up the bottom line he started crying umar came to him abu bakr what happened He said, "Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, next year he will not be amongst us." He said, "How do you say that?" He said, "Because Allah told him, 'Al Yom Akmal Tu Lakum Dinakum.' Your job is done." And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ten times he has told us, "What's my relation with this world?" So when he does not have any relation with this world and job is done, what he is doing here? You know what I'm saying? So respected brothers, my point was yes. Now I was talking to Brother Zishan. I was telling him that Abu Bakr was Abu Bakr. Every Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just keep in mind one word or one sentence of mine. We were there in Hajj, and one Egyptian Sheikh he was there. In my speech, I mentioned this sentence. He said, "I love this." And then in my presence, he was referring again and again to that sentence that Sheikh Khadi said like this. This is a very good thing. What was that sentence? I mentioned there. that sahaba they were muslims because of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were muslim because of but all of us we are muslims because of sahaba yes we are thankful to whom yes of course to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but we are thankful to abu bakr we are thankful to umar we are thankful to usman and ali we are thankful to 140000 sahaba of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they spread it all over the world and they conveyed the message because prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them in hajjat al wada fal yuballigh al shahid minkum al ghaib those who are present here in arafat now that is their duty to convey my message to those who are not here or they will be coming next in future so what happened 140000 if you will look into the history of sahaba rizwan <coughs> allah alayhi majma'in you will find in the close vicinity of medina or peninsula only 14000 sahaba they passed away in that area how many 14000 sahaba they passed away in that area where 126000 went they spread it all over the world they spread it all over the world 
you will come to Peshawar. So you will see there Sinan ibn Salama ibn Abil Muhabbiq, radiyallahu ta'ala an, his sacred grave is there. What Sinan was doing at that time? Even in this modern era, we the Pashtun from Peshawar have spread it all over the world looking for our livelihood and for our bread. So Sinan ibn Salama was there to earn something. You know what I'm saying? We do not find proper bread there here, there now in these days. What was there at that time? For what purpose he came to Peshawar? Sinan ibn Salama ibn Abil Muhabbiq, radiyallahu ta'ala an, you will go to Afghanistan. You will see right in the heart of Kabul, the grave of the son of Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala an. Yes, the, the cousin of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he was doing there. Yes, you have the book of Hadith there. You will pick up Sunan Abi Dawood. Sunan Abi Dawood. The Rabbi says, Haddasani Samurai ibn Jundub. Haddasani Samurai ibn Jundub is Sahabi. That Haddasani Samurai ibn Jundub wa huwa bi Kabula. Wa huwa bi Kabula. That because when you do Ta'rib of Kabul, so it became Kabul. Haddasani Samurai ibn Jundub wa huwa bi Kabula. That Samurai ibn Jundub, he taught us this hadith. Told us about this issue when he was in Kabul. When he was Kabul. in Kabul. And not only that, you will go to China. In China, there is one place which is called Aromchi. Yes, close to Aromchi. Uh, uh, our friend, Hewad. He is going on business trip, so I told him that when you will go to China, so just go there to Aramchi. Yes, and uh, I asked him that if you can buy him a ticket, I will follow you as well. <laughs> Inshallah. One of our friends in Dubai, he is my friend and friend of Brother Zishan. So he was there. He, s he told us that I went there. That I heard it. He said that I went there. So there are 70 Sahaba. Rizwanullahi alayhi majma'een. What they were doing there in China at that time? Yes, China at that time was not a superpower making all that stuff which they are making now. Yes, controlling all the markets until America, or up to America. Yes or not? Yes or not? The way they are going ahead, maybe next year they will make you. <laughs> because in copy they are very good. Yes. Maybe they cannot make Sheikh Sadullah. Yes. So anyhow, my point was that these 70 Sahaba, what they, and look, this is a miracle that China is a socialist country, still that is. Socialist or not? Yes. Say, yes. Yes. yes, Russian communism is gone, but China socialism is stand still. So still, and socialism does not believe in any religion, does it? It does not. Any religious people, do they? No. They do not. My son. He left already. So he was there in university. So he said that I went in Beijing for Salat al Jummah. So when we came out of uh, Salat al Jummah, so there were some these art making people writing things and Muslims. So he bought a kalima that was made of wood. Yes, woodwork. Yes. So he bought a kalima, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. It was opening like a, like a crown. So he said that I opened it like this, and I was coming back, so the police approached me. They please cover it, otherwise we have to take it. You know what I'm saying? But look, that is the miracle of these Sahaba, Rizwanullah alayhi majma'een, that right in the heart of the city, which is called downtown. Which is called here? Downtown. Heart of city is called? Downtown. downtown. So I was telling Zishan that what is the definition of downtown? where there are the high-rise buildings. So it should be high town, not right downtown. <laughs> yes, but only if you will do tawil, the foundation is very down. <laughs> Got it? So anyhow, right in downtown, where the land is sold by inches, not by feet even. So many acres area. That is reserved and preserved for the 70 dead Sahaba But they are ahya'un in the Rabbihim yurzaqun. To our approach, we can say they are dead. But with Allah, they are ahya'un in the Rabbihim yurzaqun. 
they help the hayat of alamul barzakh so acres of area and not only that not only that they have a fence all around that they have inside that graveyard there is a masjid by the name of sahaba rizwanullah alayhi majma'in and on the main entrance there is a sign board only for muslims so they don't allow any non muslim to enter there even though that's not islam but somebody has told them that these are holy men and holy people so non muslim can so they have put the sign restricted area for non muslims so people are asking us why you have put restricted area in makkah for non muslims we said because china put restricted area for sahaba <laughs> we are their muqallidin so you should ask the same question from them they do not ask them they ask us only do they ask them say no. they cannot they cannot why power is good why power, power is good somebody ask me that sheikh shekhazi when the muslims will be in good shape i say when they have two things say only two say yes only two so he said what are these two so it is number 1 that is wahda unity that is wahda unity and he said number 2 i said that is ghira stand that is ghira so he said that's very easy they should have it i said this is the utmost difficult things number 1 the unity it will never happen because unity is based upon your strong faith in allah how the whole muslim ummah will come to know that we have a strong faith in allah subhan when they have only the fear of allah there so when we see a shir so we start shivering so where is the fear of allah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says la yatamu khawfan fi qalb al mu'min in the heart of a moment two fears will never get together How many fears we have? Say, we are afraid of police. We are or not? We are afraid of highway patrol. Are we or not? Say, with louder voice. I am the same. I am not better than you people. Maybe worst. Yes, we have the fear of IRS. Yes, and we don't have any fear of FBI. <laughs> yes, you will run away from the city if somebody will tell you some FBI agent were here. They were asking about you, <laughs> brother. You have not done anything wrong. What happened to you? La yatta me o khawfani fi qalbi al mu'min. Two fears will never get together in the heart of a mu'min. He will be having either the fear of creature or the fear of creator. So if somebody claims that he has fear of Allah, Subhan, but brother. I saw you yesterday when the police came you start shivering you were unable to speak and to utter a single word how we can believe you that you have the fear of Allah alone la yatamu khawfa these were sahaba rizwanullah alayhim ajma'in they never had the fear of anybody else but only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a sahabi standing in front of persian emperor having fetters in his legs and chains in his hands and the oil that is boiling and the emperor is asking him i am going to put you in this boiling oil but if you say i wish muhammad would have been here in my place in front of you in fetters and in chains only this word if you will say it you are free and not only free you will receive lot of gifts you will have a grant a billions of dollars you know what i'm saying but the only thing is i wish if muhammad was here in front of me in fetters and chains he jumped at him and he said amsik alayka lisanaka adu wallah o the enemy of allah o the dog check your tongue what you are saying i can sacrifice myself 1000 time for muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but i don't want a single thorn in his foot why yes and the emperor didn't do anything to their sahabi radhiyallahu ta'ala an because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a fear of you in the heart of such like people but the only thing is get in touch with allah 